Today on Applied Science, I'd like to show you a technique where I zoom in from light microscope images to scanning electron microscope images. So let's pick an everyday household object that you might find surprising, just your average cheap house brand toothbrush. Here we're looking at a section of the toothbrush with a standard photographic macro lens, and then we're going to smoothly transition to a microscope objective, and then also transition to the electron microscope view. And I made this animation by moving the brush a small amount in the electron microscope and taking a frame and then animating this whole thing in Adobe Premiere. Okay, so so far pretty cool but not surprising. But take a look at the same model toothbrush after it's been used for a few months. Whoa. So, I mean, you, you probably knew that toothpaste is abrasive, but I'm kind of surprised it's that abrasive. As you can see, the bristles are completely worn down. Uh, the diameter is about 200 microns for each bristle, and um, this, you know, toothbrush is at most three months old. Since the toothpaste is so abrasive, I wanted to get a look at it with the microscope as well. So I decided to prepare two samples in different ways. The first method, I just took some toothpaste and put it onto a piece of glass and uh, tried to dry it out in a vacuum desiccator. And this ended up not working particularly well, but it made for some interesting footage. So I uh, took it out of the vacuum desiccator and coated it with silver using my uh, evaporative uh, physical vapor deposition system. And I'll put links to all this stuff in the description. But basically what's happening here is the, um, there's a little metal basket inside the vacuum chamber that's getting red hot. And uh, it's, it's um, vaporizing silver metal, pure silver. And the silver is coming up and coating the surface of the object that I've put into the bell jar. And so the purpose of all this is just to make the subject conductive so that when the scanning electron microscope looks at it, those electrons that are coming down and hitting the surface actually hit something conductive, the silver. So if we're looking at something that's non-conductive, like a toothbrush, a toothbrush bristle or a piece of toothpaste, um, the electrons would actually get buried in the sample and we wouldn't get a very good image. I loaded the sample into the electron microscope as normal and then set it up to look at the uh, image at low magnification. And as you can see at low magnification everything was okay and I could scroll around and look at the sample. But whenever I zoomed in the concentration of the electron beam in one small area caused it to start bubbling very uh, violently in fact. So what's going on here is the toothpaste is a mix of water and some other things, glycerin and I think uh, maybe guar gum or something like that too and it's formed sort of a skin over the top, so I'll bet there's water trapped below the skin of this thing, and then when you concentrate in with the electron beam, it's actually uh, either heating or sort of drilling a little hole through that top layer and causing the water to expand and bubble out. It could just be trapped gas, too, just trapped air or something like that. I don't have a digital acquisition system set up for real-time video yet, but that is in the works, and so currently I'm just capturing this video by pointing the uh, camera at the microscope's uh, cathode ray tube. So it's, you know, fairly low quality, but once I get full control over the raster uh, scan generator in the scanning electron microscope, I'll have better quality video. Since the first toothpaste sample didn't work, I tried again, and this time put some toothpaste into a test tube with some distilled water and shook it vigorously. And my plan this time was to uh, try to dissolve everything that would dissolve in water. And what I should be left with is the uh, essentially the sand or whatever the abrasive media that they put in toothpaste since that's not soluble in water it's it's very much like sand and so I did a couple of water changes shaking the test tube and just letting it settle by gravity and uh, after a few cycles uh, of only letting it settle for a few minutes each I was left with a white substance in the bottom of the test tube so I scooped that out and put it onto the same glass holder and this time dried it with heat instead of in a uh, vacuum desiccator and then coated it with silver just as before, and then looked at it with the SEM, and this is what it looks like. The particles are quite a bit bigger than I expected. It's about 20 to 30 micron, and so that's the equivalent of maybe six to 800 grit sandpaper, which is, you know, fairly coarse. I mean, you're putting that stuff, you saw what it did to the toothbrush bristles, and so, you know, you're putting that on your teeth every day. That's pretty abrasive, and, um, if you're stuck somewhere and you don't have access to decent plastic polish or anything, you can actually use toothpaste uh, to clear up like fogged headlight lenses, you know, plastic uh, headlight lenses on a car. Um, you know, six to eight hundred won't get you really decent optical clarity, but if your starting point is pretty rough, it will actually help you get, you know, at least to about 600 grit equivalent. 
I'm still working out the kinks in my process to transition from light microscope images to scanning electron microscope images. And so in this case, uh, the brush that you're looking at in the light microscope image where the animation started, uh, I actually had to remove the silver coating because first I did the scanning electron microscope imagery and so I had a silver coated toothbrush that looks like this. And then I had to, um, since the scanning electron microscope has such a small field of view, I had to sort of pick a spot on the brush that looked good in the SEM and then took this out and had to remove the silver using nitric acid and then did the light microscope imaging using this um, attachment with the microscope objective screwed onto a camera adapter. And I'm pretty sure I have a, a video about this which I'll put a link to in the description. Also, I had to build this special holder for the toothbrush since um, it's kind of a large object to put in the SEM and I needed the rotation to be kind of close to where I was imaging. So you can see the bristles are here, and if this thing spins on its axis, or actually it's kind of more like this, so that as it spins on its axis, if we're imaging right in the center here, it doesn't uh, move off. Whereas if I just put this thing flat down, the tips of the bristles would be moving quite a lot, and it would be hard to fit all that into the field of view of the SEM. So I've started to accumulate a large number of these customized holders, and then I can either hot glue down or uh, use some um, uh, conductive carbon glue to glue stuff down. As you can see, the silver deposition is directional. So the underside of the brush has no silver on it because it was glued down like this. And I put it into the deposition chamber with the silver aiming upwards. And as you can see, it's even coming off on my fingers there. I've been creating these animations by taking still images from the SEM and then creating little zoom snippets in them and putting this in Adobe Premiere <clears throat> and then using the offset and zoom controls to sort of align the front end of each clip to the back end of the next and so on. This is a pretty time consuming process and the end result is actually not that smooth. So a couple of viewers that know much more about video editing than I do uh, did a much better version using Adobe After Effects where they layered all of the images and then smooth the edges out. And in After Effects, you can have these incredible zoom ratios where you go from um, you know, 35x with the scanning electron microscope all the way up to 100,000x. So let's take a look at that right now. This is a tungsten filament from a very tiny light bulb. And we're zooming in super smooth uh, because of this better technique, which I hope to uh, implement myself in the near future. The abrasive in this particular toothpaste is dicalcium phosphate dihydrate, the first ingredient or the first inactive ingredient. And uh, in other toothpastes, sometimes baking soda is used and in still others, uh, titanium oxide is used. But they basically all have the property that they wear down the tartar that may collect on your teeth. So the, um, the plaque is actually fairly soft and so the purpose of the bristles is to just remove the plaque. And in fact, the reason that you have to change your toothbrush after it you know, wears out is mostly because the, um, the softness, sort of the bristles, have become worn down where they don't actually wipe away plaque as effectively as they do when new. So you might think, oh, well, that rough surface on the bristles is just you know, sloppy manufacturing. But no, it's actually made that way on purpose so that the bristles are wiping away plaque in a much more effective manner. When they're smoothed over, they aren't as, um, there aren't as many surfaces on the surface of those bristles to wipe away the plaque. Okay, see you next time. Bye.